Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Marvel Snapshots Captain America. But first, who's ready for Stamp Talk? Oh, it was a blast from the past. All of yesterday, I, I packaged up all the... Uh, do you remember when I found uh, like 200 copies of Lost Souls? So me and John Malum split them, and then I was able to sell them for a premium. Well, I finally got all the packaging, so I packaged them up. Stamps and packaging and tape, all that stuff. Boy, I forgot how long that takes. That was like all day till like one in the morning. I'm also getting the uh, iron sights. I still owe some pe people some iron sights prints, and then there's a couple other, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, random things I got in mail. I'm basically getting out of self fulfillment in any way. I'm gonna farm that out because while it was kind of fun and you know, kind of what, what do you call that um, retrospective. Nostalgic. Nostalgic to fall of 2018. Um, uh, I could have lettered <laughs> all of Do As You're Told this weekend instead of just um, doing a bunch of uh, ful fulfillment stuff. So speaking of Do As You're Told, I decided, so it's got 19 days, that this is going to be... If you remember, the first Iron Sights was 30 days. That was it for the whole campaign. Uh, this is going to be a 30-day campaign. There's 19 days left. I'm going to shut this down. Why? Well, a couple reasons. If you see right here, I have four active campaigns. I remember when I, <laughs> when I had three, and things were clipping along quite well. But all of a sudden, when I had four, it didn't quite work as well. You know, everything kind of stopped for the other three. I think it's just, you know, one of those psychologically significant, you know, three people can wrap their head around that. Four, you're getting crazy. I'll come back. It's like when I have those, you know, friends who start doing a bunch of videos about Onision or Amber Heard. It's like, I'm going to unsubscribe for a while. I'll check back in a couple of months. Um, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, both Do As You're Told and Pandemic are going to shut down their, uh, their uh, Indiegogo campaigns in 19 days. So I'm trying to get a uh, prototype, a physical prototype of this uh, no cloth mask um, uh, but uh, and then because I got I think I'm gonna do impossible stars so I'm probably gonna launch that uh, oh geez July um, so yeah so shortly after these two end uh, I'll launch uh, impossible stars um, so anyway um so I just did a video about um, this white woman who wrote about uh, Gula uh, culture this is a Tidal Island culture of ex-slaves, um, South Carolina-ish area. And she wrote an entire novel and then she got intimidated and she canceled uh, herself. So one of my, you know, I, I was really ranting. I was like, everyone can write about everyone. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, because for the umpteenth time, I've seen uh, a, a far leftist, extremely political writer, this, and this time Mark Russell, try to write a black person, and it is a complete and utter disaster. Uh, so this is Marvel Snapshots. Um, the, the ads were kind of confusing because it said Kurt Busiek, so I was like, okay, he's writing. But no, he's the curator, which I had to think about it for, and I was like, okay, Marvel's... You got some film. Okay, so they're kind of doing like the Marvels with Alex Ross. So it's just, if this uh, kind of goes off of the uh, Mad Bomb story from 1976. So it's set in 1976. So it's like, okay. Now, as soon as I heard Mark Russell and Captain America, I said, hmm, I wonder if this far left, extremely political writer is going to use Captain America as a mouthpiece for his biased uh, uh, politics. And it's a trick question because Captain America is barely in this book at all. Uh, what this is, it's, it's a book about a Gordon Good brother who loves the science and the terrorism temporarily. So he, he has a long-term affection for science and a short-term flirtation with terrorism. Um, uh, all the while, he's still portrayed as the Gord So he's like some like Sesame Street kid fixing uh, remote controls. Oh, this is a remote control that can control anything. 
And then uh, people are getting, so they have the Mad Bomb. The Mad Bomb is one of those, you know, Kirby inventions. It was like this bomb with a brain in it that it made everyone get angry. Um, the weird thing is that, you know, like I said, Kurt Busiek is curating this. Let's see who's actually editing it. Actual editor is Darren Shan, who's done some good stuff. I, I've, I've looked before at it. Like, but um, does anyone still want to see a baby attack the mom and a, and a mom kill the baby? Because that scene, which belongs in an issue of Preacher, is somehow in this freaking Marvel comic. And the tone shift is stark. Um, so then uh, the, the story is that the Mad Bomb... Uh, was only activated for I think something really short like 16 minutes um, and you know it emanated and uh, it, it was mainly you know happened in Manhattan but uh, old dude's out in the Bronx and he they catch uh, the tail end of it um, now here's the thing okay we're gonna talk about the Bronx now, yeah, you see, like, you know, Rumble in the Bronx, you know, Jackie Chan, where there's, like, uh, mountains in the background because it's filmed in Vancouver, I think. Uh, the Bronx is freaking wild. First of all, it is huge. It is stupidly huge. It's like, why isn't... The Bronx should be broken into five boroughs itself. Like, half of it is a no-shit forest. Not a park. A freaking forest. Um, with, like... Mayberry ass neighborhoods. So I always laugh. I go, it's got to be so strange to be a cop in the Bronx because one of your calls is like somebody stealing a rhubarb pie off of someone's windowsill, you know, <laughs> in this like 1950s looking neighborhood. And then the other one is a baby just stabbed another baby. Um, uh, if you live in New York City, uh, you, you get the incredible. Uh, honor of watching the New York City uh, nightly news, which is just really weird. Um, first of all, the newscasters are like a hundred years old. I, I don't know what kind of union they have for newscasters, but if you get hired in 1962, you broadcast until you die. Um, so it's always like this ancient white guy with a fairly attractive ethnic woman. Um, so that's just a thing. The other thing is, you can always, so um, one of the things they like to do is like say the crime and then say the location when they're doing a news story, but you can always tell the Bronx crimes. Uh, the Bronx cr crimes are uh, always a combination of a couple of things. You have a, a bodega, an old person being assaulted who did absolutely nothing, literally just walking down the uh, uh, sidewalk. Uh, gangster ass shit by 40 year olds who who always get uh, arrested at their mother's house and did I, there's one other one uh, okay so 42 year old gangsters um, uh, hitting 90 year olds oh and then like ridiculous street numbers that seem like they're like farcical they're like today on 3142nd street a 42 year old unemployed man uh, knocked out a 90 year old retiree and then uh ran to his mother's house one block away where he was arrested um uh so that's so uh the bronx is here's the deal the bronx in 1976 on fire and this is obviously a like filter over a, a photograph after a terrorist attack looks the same as the bronx right now there's no fixing the bronx like it's the bronx like you just hear it like it 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 if you've never seen a movie at the bronx i just say the bronx what you just imagine in your head that's what the bronx is like um so they're all like man nobody cares about the bronx it's like that that's what it looks like right now uh so then uh power outages were a regular occurrence in their desperation people took to looting uh what <laughs> That's some passive voice right there. Uh, so then, um, uh, you know, uh, what does he say? Sometimes the police would come, but in most neighborhoods, the police came to keep the peace. Here, they came to keep the war. Well, you just said people are looting. 
freaking harassing and robbing women in the streets. So, okay. So then we get uh, back to the... Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about Gordon Goodbrother. Gordon Goodbrother is the way that uh, black men uh, are written for the last five years in most comics, specifically Marvel. Uh, they are uh, passive, submissive, ineffectual. A lot of them are twerpy like this kid. Like, he's a little twerp. So, uh, they, uh, they love the science, and the thing about this is SJWs have this thing where they like to subvert expectations. So, what they do is they try to, oh, you know, the elephant in the room is that SJWs are very, very intimidated by black men. So, when they write them, they write black men that don't intimidate them. Uh, uh, soft, submissive, physically small, uh, weak, sad... And then to give themselves some woke points, they're like, hey, want to hear about my fictional story? This black man is educated. And then they like wait for you to congratulate them. Like it's, I, I, I used this word before uh, when I was talking about um, Brian Michael Bendis. I used the word race-ish. I don't think they hate black people. I think they like the idea of black people. But I think they are just very scared of them. They never feel at ease or at home, so they just act weird. So then they start the, the cliche, you know, this, like, look how sad and sullen they are. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just th this is the typical way that black men are written in Marvel comics. So he's like, oh, you know, the, the shop's not doing so good, so I can't send you to college anymore. So he's like, shit, I gotta become a terrorist. The whole time I'm reading this, I'm just like, Join the Navy, join the Air Force. You, 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 they keep talking about how you love the science. I'm sure your GT scores on the ASVAB would be freaking amazing. So join the, uh, join the Navy, join the Air Force, join the Army, join the Marine Corps, join the freaking Peace Corps. Like, your dad can't pay for your college, so you, base, you have to become a terrorist. So who would have believed that the recruiter for terrorists is a creepy white guy with blonde hair? That's topical. Now, I thought they were going to skirt over the thing where, like, it wasn't common knowledge that AIM was terrorist. But <laughs> the kid basically says, he goes, uh, aren't you part of HYDRA? <laughs> so he knows it. He knows they're terrorists. It wasn't like he thought he was joining some science freedom fighters or something like that. He knows it's terrorists. And he's like, well, shit, my dad won't pay for my college. So, I, I mean, the only logical conclusion is that I must become a terrorist. So he's kind of on the fence about becoming a terrorist. And if you're looking at the screen, you're like, am I nuts or is this like the eighth time this uh, composition has been? Yeah. So the artist is very lazy and, and traces photographs a lot and then reuses the trace photograph. So then they're kind of talking about repairs after the Mad Bomb. And Captain America says, the nation stands. To which he says, the nation stands? Does it look like we're standing? Wait, let's see, man, I have a question. Bronx is still burning like three weeks after a terrorist attack. I think this is just the Bronx's natural state. He's like, oh, this, 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 I'm definitely becoming a terrorist now. So he becomes a terrorist. <laughs> and he finds it very gratifying. He goes, Harold was right. The work was challenging and rewarding. I never thought I'd make this kind of money. Get this kind of respect. It made me wonder, is this what other people call life? So again, um, and I remember even seeing it in like uh, Fabian Nicieza. It was like an old night thrasher he was talking about. He's like, he, he's like, you know, people say, uh, how can I write a, a black character without dealing with a bunch of cliche inner city stuff? That, as if all black people are inner city. All of them are living in the hood. Like, it's like some cliche to, out of the freaking 1980s. So again... All I'm thinking is, you know, you would get good pay, a nice bonus, respect, satisfaction of a, of a job well done. Did you rob a bank or something like that when you were 16 and you just can't join the military? Like, what's up? So he's really super into being a terrorist. But then he finds out that the weapon that was used uh, to harm New York City uh, is being... Uh, also made the terrorists are just making a larger version of it to which he gets mad so he sabotages it and uh they catch him 
And then the Avengers come. Oh, he's got Grandma's remote control. Look at his freaking face. A mad bomb? Again? <laughs> so then, uh, and you are? I'm the one who destroyed the mad bomb. Yeah, we kind of gathered that from the fact that they were about to kill you. So how'd you do it? I reconfigured. <laughs> Is everything done? I guess, yeah, I guess they took these guys out very quickly. Uh, so he's like, oh, I did a science. He's like, pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. This isn't even a traced photo of a helicopter. This is just messing with the freaking contrast. And then, oh, this is painful. Huh? He's like, uh, we'd like you to work for us. W wait, wait, what? I'm sorry. Why isn't he in jail? Yes, he did help destroy the Mad Bomb, but he also designed other weapons and knowingly joined a terrorist organization. It's probably I in the Twin Towers is like, hmm, hmm, nah, well, maybe. Um, so then they just show up. He's like, uh, Captain? Mr. Sark, uh, what can I do for you? He's, they're like, yeah, we're here to arrest you. You're a terrorist. Yeah, but I, um, I stopped like five minutes before you arrested me. Okay, so, you know, we'll, the judge will probably go lenient on you. You'll go to jail for 15 years instead of 25. But yeah, you're, you're going to jail. You, you joined a terrorist organization. I don't know. Um, so then he's like, offers him a job. And then <laughs> this freaking woke terrorist lectures we're going to see first one and then a second, uh, I was going to say American hero. They're worldwide heroes. They saved the world. With all due respect, Mr. Stark, maybe that's the problem. Everyone wants to build the future. Nobody gives a damn about building the president, says the terrorist who helped design weapons for the terrorist organization he knowingly joined. Up here, we congratulate anyone who gets out of the projects, not for their success, but simply for leaving. And I've been here all my life. I've never seen any of you up here. So, no offense, but you don't seem any more concerned about us than AIM was. Oh, jeez. Maybe you're right, he said in front of a traced photograph of a bus. Hey, wait, is that a... soldier? Either coming back from boot camp or heading off to deployment? So, the military does exist. Like, recruiting and, and veterans. So people in the Bronx do join the military, just not this dude who is now lecturing Captain America. Maybe you're right. I suppose it's easy to only view it as a crisis when bad things happen to people who aren't used to it. And for that, I'm sorry. Also, you're under arrest for, you know, the terrorist. You did a lot of terrorism. You're a terrorist. You joined a terrorist organization. Because I said things were good. Things were never going to be good in the Bronx. They were never good before. I don't know why you're blaming me. Uh, so then he goes back to the same traced photograph of a TV repair shop. Uh, the thing about repairing electronics is they keep breaking. Your work's never done. Excuse me, I have a question. I don't think you're very good at your job. No, they don't. they don't just break. Something happens to them. But everything you fix improves somebody's life. Gives them something they wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah, your mother would have killed you and you would have killed your father and your father would have eaten, you would have, somebody would have eaten you and your father if the Mad Bomb wouldn't have been stopped by the, the people, the, the heroes that you lecture. The world is, I suppose, too big to fix all at once, says the terrorist. Lift with them knees, turkey! So maybe it's okay to fix one broken thing at a time. We never meant to abandon anyone, you know. I know, said the terrorist. Holy shit, you are a lazy artist! You just re This is the same people! It... Wow, that is lazy. Uh... Wow. It's just that, well, I'm really good at hitting things. I, I, that's a nice way of saying that you constantly risk your life. 
basically your entire life since you were 18 to save anyone, anywhere who needs saving. I get that, says the terrorist. We all try to do what we're best at, says the terrorist. So you look for problems you can solve by beating up aliens, or sea monsters, or whatever. <laughs> Haven't punched out a sea monster in weeks. But you're right, terrorists. We're supposed to be heroes. Sometimes we forget what that means, comma, terrorist. It's not just about saving the world. It never has been. Sometimes we forget that a broken world doesn't need heroes so much as it needs repairmen. See, okay, I have, a, I have a question. Does Mark Russell not know that construction is a skilled trade? <laughs> Highly skilled trade. Uh, and actually very well paid uh, trade. Um, it is kind of a dream of, uh, you know, the, uh, the working class to get a, a construction job. If you can get into a union, uh, you're living out there in a nice house, you know, in outer boroughs or maybe you know, somewhere in Queens. Family loves you. You're the breadwinner. I, w besides carrying a box of stuff and a poorly drawn girder and talking to a guy who's near a girder. By the way, uh, yeah, Captain America can't lift stuff like this. <laughs> He's not super powered. He can lift like, uh, with very proper form, he can lift like 800 pounds, I think. This, you no, know, he can't just put a girder on top of it. So how are these... Girders aren't even really connected properly. They're just near each other. Um, so uh, does Mark Russell not know that construction is like a, it's a skill. It, it's, it's a very uh, valuable skill. Uh, I think he's, he's just like, oh, that's something that poor people do. So if you're a poor, you go build a skyscraper. And that's how you um, buy your Lunchables. Uh, no, asshole. It is very important skilled trade that's why they have unions because it takes years these guys just got on a construction site they don't let you go on there like some you need get the fuck down there falcon what the hell are you doing up there get the, what the take that freaking chinese hat off oh oh my god captain america put that girder down oh my god my union rep this season get off of the site you guys are screwing. You just care. Do you even know what you're doing? You're just going to put it next to that thing? This building's going to fall down. Like, come on. This is just, this is just, this all, this entire book is Mark Russell back scratching his own ego. So then the poor, like, this, this, this was the plot of uh, that Mark Wade book. What was it called? I don't know. It was shit. Where uh, you had a bunch of young people on the Avengers and they stopped a terror attack. And they're like, wait, we're just going to like leave? And they're like, yeah, we're, we're superheroes. We're not construction workers. She's like, we should build buildings. By the way, when they started their own, I don't remember them ever building buildings. They just did generic superhero shit. Uh, but yeah, so this is ridiculous. Number one, this young man could have joined any of the... Oh, uh, I forgot about the Coast Guard. He, he loves the science. There's engineering jobs in the Coast Guard. Um, he could have joined a uh, Navy... Army, Marine Corps, Air Force, or the Coast Guard. I'm sure the Peace Corps. I'm sure a million, if he's as smart as they say he is. Uh, he was designing death rays. So I'm sure he could have gotten an internship anywhere in the New York City area. Uh, he's then lecturing an American hero who stopped uh, his terror group. Um, and uh, yeah, this is all absolute dog shit. Not even getting into how incredibly lazy... The artist is. So uh, here's a here's a thought. Stop letting far left political extremists use Captain America and black people to mouthpiece their extremist politics. Oh, and also don't join terrorist organizations. What is with these like woke white guys? They keep portraying minorities as terrorists. Mark Wade literally has a team of teenage terrorists. Mark woke Mark Russell creates a terrorist. And at the end, he just like lectures heroes and works at the same shitty fucking uh, repair, TV repair shop. Lightning fast VCR repair. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, hopefully that was his last act of terrorism, but I have no evidence he's learned any lesson. I mean, he's lecturing actual heroes. 
Uh, he should definitely be arrested. He should do five, ten, five, ten years. You know, I mean, he he joins Al Qaeda, <laughs> knowing it was a t come on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Expendables Go to Hell. Pandemic comic book. Uh, oh, so Pandemic and Do As You're Told will be ending in uh, 19 days. So get them while they're hot. I'm trying to get to 2,000 backers on Do As You're Told. That's basically my success failure for these uh, crowdfunded indie comics that I make. Anyway, thanks for watching.